Hello there and welcome. I am excited that you're here because I've been looking forward to sharing this stuff with you. So welcome to my training on how to get on life's good side. I'm going to share my three key secrets with you. And this should probably not take any more than an hour. I will at least do my best to stick with it and not get too sidetracked. So let's just jump straight in. I'm Trine. I'm Danish and it's kind of awkward to pronounce for most people. It sounds like Trina and that's perfectly fine. That's the easiest way for most people to pronounce it. My full name is Trine Lehmann Hansen and I have always been interested in, in life and what makes life what makes life seem easier for some people than others? And I was probably always interested in this mainly because it seemed easier for other people and harder for me. That was sort of my, my basic question. I didn't actually formulate it till later, but that was always sort of what I was looking for. What's going on here? Why is, why is, why is stuff working out easier for some people while others are trying just as hard or even harder with not quite as good results? Uh, for my professional studies, that led me to cultural and social anthropology because that is the study of human beings in all our surroundings. It takes into account everything from religion and society and culture. So I figured that would give me some answers. It just didn't. It was mostly, it was all about the theories and it was very academic. And every time I tried to relate it to real people, it was sort of like, uh, no, no, because this theory says, so I figured that was not for me. So I jumped to teaching instead because if I could learn how people take things in, how we adapt to new knowledge, I figured that would help me figure out how we can improve as well. And, and that took me a little bit further without giving me all the answers either. And I ended up studying coaching. And there are a lot of good questions in coaching, but when I asked my trainers, uh, what it takes, why some people have success and others don't. And, and, and they were like, well, coaching, obviously. But I was like, sure. But what makes us coachable to begin with? Because it's like some people have that thing, whatever it is. And I have been chasing that ever since. I don't have any sort of full full scientific proofs, but I, I've gotten a little bit closer. And that's part of what I'm going to share with you here today, because I have been searching all the spiritual stuff, all the personal growth and development. And, and there are a lot of theories. But one thing that I find is the foundation of getting anything else to work is getting on life's good side. And that's part of what makes me a spiritual rebel. That's how I see myself because all my searching led me to, well, it actually cost extra stress. That's always been my sort of main struggle in life. When things were hard, it was stress and then followed by depressions. And, and all this searching for the answers, the being spiritual and reading all the books and doing all the assignments that just caused additional stress because it felt like there were mile long to do lists that you had to check this box and this box and this box. If you want to call yourself a spiritual being or uh, master your life or whatever. And I tried that. I tried all of that for so long and it, it just exhausted me. And when I finally had enough, I was like, stop, wait, I'm spending so much effort. This is like a full-time job trying to, 
to be happy trying to make my life work. That just cannot be the way. So I decided that that's not what I wanted. And I sort of gave up. I I was like, if it has to be this hard, I'm not playing this game anymore. Life is supposed to be enjoyable, isn't it? And it wasn't for me at the time. But coming to this sort of sort of giving up place, that's when things started changing for me. And that's actually what led me to getting on life's good side. But I did not start out there, I can assure you. So let me first tell you how I see it unfold when you feel like you're on life's bad side. Of course, life does not have a bad side. Life just is, but it can certainly feel like we are in the doghouse with life. It can feel like that when things aren't going our way and when everybody else succeeds or got it figured out or whatever it is that we sometimes feel that we can't do, that we can't have, but everybody else got. And that's what makes things feel unfair sometimes. I don't know if you know that, but I had an older brother who was just really good at anything he did. He was super popular. He was outgoing. He had tons of friends. Everybody knew who he was. He had lots of success in school and sports and everything. And that was kind of annoying sometimes. So I felt like I was growing up in his shadow. And that's probably one of the things that made me ask this question because it felt so unfair and it felt lonely because it felt like I was doing something wrong because clearly life could be good. We grew up in the same house and he was doing so much better than me. And it wasn't that I wasn't trying. It felt like one big challenge. It felt like I was always giving everything I had and didn't even have half his results. So that made me feel insecure as well because what was I doing wrong? And then after repeatedly having tried and felt like I failed, I became guarded. I sort of, I took a step back and I was like, all right, okay, if life is unfair and just challenging me and I'm not getting any results, why even bother? I don't know if you know that feeling, but it's not really, it's not, <laughs> it's not very beneficial to anything being guarded. I don't know if you know that from your other relationships, but as soon as we become guarded, we close ourselves off and we aren't even receptible to whatever good stuff might come our way because we're so busy feeling sorry for ourselves or, or holding a grudge almost that we can mess things up for ourselves. So that's why I much prefer being on life's good side. That's so much more enjoyable when that's our experience. And, you know, being on someone's good side, it, it might be sort of a, a funny expression to use with life. But if we consider it like with our boss, we want to be on our boss's good side. We might not have defined what that means, but we just know that things are easier if we are on his good graces, if we are on his good side, if we're on good terms with our boss or a spouse for that matter, or parents and teachers back in the day, things are just easier when we get along. And when we are on life's good side, that's when we, we sort of, we have this trust in life because if you don't trust your boss, if you don't trust the company you work for, then no matter how well you're on, on their good side, you don't show up, you don't, you're not there authentically, you're not fully you. And that's one of the things about being on the good side of life, that we get to, we get to be ourselves. That gives us opportunities because a boss or a life or a spouse who trusts us, who knows that we're showing up, with everything we have and doing our best, they are much more 
forgiving. They are more willing to give us opportunities. We have more freedom. And there's this mutual kind of trust that just opens up and makes everything more smooth and enjoyable. And all of these things add up and gives us a sense of confidence. When we are on life's good side, we feel safe and we're confident that there's room for us in the world, which of course there is. But I don't know if you've had that sense of not really fitting in, of not belonging and feeling different. That's something I struggled with for a long time. But having found my way to life's good side, that has no longer the same hold over me either. So I think this was enough of warm up. I hope that you have the sense of what it is I'm talking about when I'm saying on life's good side. It's a funny term, but I think you get it. And of course, life only has a good side. And that's actually what I'm going to dig into a little bit deeper in the first of my three key secrets. You see them here. The first one is trusting your life, as I have already sort of been building up to, because, and this is probably the most important thing in this whole training, that you are already on life's good side. You always have been. And you cannot do anything to not be on life's good side. That's just how the way it is. Because life only has the good side. I will come back to this and explain it a little bit further. And I hope I manage to give you this sense that the universe is actually on your side. The second of my secrets is finding your superpower. This is one of the most fun ones, because once we discover what makes us unique, it's so much easier to create our space in the world. And it often turns out that it is our biggest challenges or the things we're most annoyed about with ourselves that actually turn out to have some of our greatest strengths as well. So we'll be digging into that as well in a little bit. And the third secret is healing your pain. It is about, well, we have often gotten a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. I don't think any of us have gone through life without that. And that is where we sometimes, you know, pick up the guardedness. We might even hold a grudge or we can end up feeling a kind of resentment towards life. And that's, that's what we need to heal. That might sound like it's going to take at least 10 years on a therapist's couch, but it doesn't necessarily have to. This is just a short training, of course, but I will give you a few tips and pointers to show you that it is actually possible. Because holding a grudge against life itself is one of the quickest way to ruin all the fun of life. So let's dig in and look at the first secret. Though I should probably say that, of course, they're not secrets and they're not even mine. I mean, this stuff is out there, isn't it? It is, I believe that all the knowledge, all these sort of universal truths they are available to all of us and we might hear them or encounter them or experience them in our own way. So these are my terms, but they're of course not my inventions. So what I have come to believe is that trusting life, as I said, is of major importance. And the way I, I, I came into this was when I started to realize that the universe is never ending expansion. Scientists tell us that the universe started with the Big Bang and that's basically just one big explosion and an explosion is expansive. 
in its nature. And the universe has actually kept expanding ever since, and it still is. And if you look at it in that perspective, being a part of this universe, actually, uh, we're actually made up of the same exact stuff as everything else, because science also tells us that if we pick anything apart below or beyond its, its tiniest components, if we pick apart atoms, we find energy, nothing but energy, no matter if it's physical objects or if it's us or if it's the universe itself, even our thoughts and our emotions have this kind of energy. So being such an ingrained part of everything and everything is expanding, that means we must be too. And of course we are. We grow up and we learn and we expand our horizon is a term that we use. And what could be more natural than that? That means that personal and spiritual growth is a part of this as well. It's part of our natural state of being. And that's why it shouldn't be that hard work. If we allow it to flow a little bit more freely, it can. And the next part of this is that the energy is not something we have to worry about. Well, we can sort of run head first into it and we might pinch ourselves off from it, but in its nature, it is, it is love and it is light. I call it source energy. Some people would call it God or spirit or whatever universe. I refer to it sometimes as as well, but it is nothing but love and light. It's the only source of anything in the universe. It's like, it's like the sun. It's our only natural source of light. And even though it gets dark at night because the world turns and, and the planet is between us and the sun, it gets dark. But that's not because the sun stopped shining or started radiating darkness. I mean, there is no source of darkness. We don't have a darkness switch. So if we find a room too bright, we can turn off the lights and we can close the curtains. We cannot create darkness. We cannot turn the darkness up. And it's the same thing with us and our emotions, they can become clouded and we can sort of turn our backs to the light, which makes us sort of look at our shadow. We're in our own shadow. We have pinched ourselves off from source energy. And that's when it starts to feel dark and lonely. But the good news is that that's something we do it's not the universe looking at us and going, mm, that one and that one and that one can have some, some love and some light, but the others, mm, nah, not today. It's not like that. It's the only source of everything in the universe. So it's pretty much up to us how to let it in or if we let it in even. And we might as well because energy never goes away. Once energy is created, it's internal. It can change forms, but energy can never be destroyed or eliminated. It can never cease to exist again. And that's because the universe is inclusive as well. One of the principles is inclusion. And that means that all our experiences, they have created energy, they have created memories, they have created experiences and emotions for us. And we can't just undo them. We can ignore them for a while. We can sort of not pave them over. We can sweep them under the rug for a little bit, but it's still there. And that's one of the issues I have with some of the mainstream teachings. It's sort of like you just have to create a new habit and smash those old beliefs and break the bad habits and just eliminate any doubt. But it doesn't work like that. We cannot undo things. What we can do is we can look at them. 
we can integrate them, we can find the value and the good stuff in them, and we can use them, we can turn them into something that works for us instead. So I hope this has given you a, a different perspective, maybe even a more positive experience about or view on how to look at the universe, how to be in the universe. So take a moment now and take a deep breath and just consider, is it possible for you to be on life's good side? Have you felt it? I bet you've had the sense of it. I bet you had that feeling of, mm, this is what life's supposed to look like. This is what life's supposed to feel like. And if you have had that experience, even once, you can find it again. So take a deep breath and imagine being on life's good side of having the whole universe at your back. All these universal powers and source energy. Imagine that it's all on your side. What is now possible for you? Are you getting a sense of it? I hope you are. I'm not going to turn this into a, a long meditation or anything. I just wanted you to catch a glimpse of this. So I hope you did. And I will move on to secret number two, which is finding your superpower. I already sort of... Uh, gave a little warning that this is my one of my favorite parts because once we find our superpower that's when we go from feeling like we don't really fit in we don't really belong some people actually go through life <clears throat> feeling almost homesick for for that other place where we feel like we would belong where we feel like we could be who we are unapologetically and without holding back, without trying to bend over backwards to conform. And we can get to do that right here on this imperfect planet in our human physical forms. And the best way I know of doing that is to, to find and own our unique genius, which is what I call our superpower. Because you're not meant to fit into any pre-existing box. Because that would just make you a copy of whoever created that box. And we're all originals. We get to be who we really are. So you get to create a you-sized space out there in the world. And you get to fill it. Because once you do that... That's where life gets to be really fun. And that's where we get to contribute what we came to do. We get to fill our purpose. And nothing gives more confidence than that. Because once we feel like we've found our rightful place, our limits can also be the things that sets us free. Because... It is typically our worst sides or our biggest limitations or greatest challenges that holds the key to what it is that we came here to do. That's what shows us our superpower. And once we have those, once we've unlocked them, I bet you have this sense of wanting to make a difference. You want your life to have meaning. And what could be more meaningful than getting to be you in all your units, in all your human imperfection, and just fill in your space, share your gift with the world. That's, that's just one of my favorite parts. And if you were to take a breath and just just sort of chew on, on, on the idea that you are actually here to explore and express 
your very own superpower. Imagine that that's the whole purpose of your life, finding your superpower and having a blast while sharing it with the world. Take a deep breath, close your eyes if you like, and tell me how that makes you feel. I get sort of a little tingly, a little bubbly, because I think that feels really good. Might also be a little butterfly feeling, because it can be a little bit scary. I bet that if you are actually really honest with yourself, you have this feeling that you're meant for more, and that there's something about you that is not just meant to get by, but to actually thrive. I hope you do. Because I believe that's true for all of us. And that sort of leaves me to the third secret that isn't a secret about healing our pain. Because that is typically what is holding us back. When we have this sense of, of guardedness, of carrying a little bit of resentment, maybe even holding a grudge. We are, I, there's an expression about biting off your nose to spite your face. And we sometimes do that. I know I did. Sort of like, oh, yeah, okay, well, life's against me anyway, so I might as well just sit here and not be happy. As if I could get back at life by doing that. That's silly, and I know, but it took me a while to get to that place where I felt like I could forgive the past for all those bumps and bruises along the way. And I didn't start to do that until I realized that these, these sort of stumbling blocks were actually building blocks. And I know it sounds... It sounds easy, doesn't it? Oh, just look for the silver lining or uh, there's there's a gift in every problem or uh, don't look at it as a problem, but as a project. And, and all these great advice, they're just not that easy if you're sort of in the thick of it. But once I realized how every single little thing that I had always been annoyed with myself about, I had always felt was holding me back. Once I managed to turn that around, everything became easier. And I'll give you an example, because I spent about a decade with stress and depression. And even before I, it, it caused me my job and, and I really sort of crashed. Even before that, I, I sort of I was prone to stress and depressions and and I had my sort of dips quite often. And and one of the things that made it really hard for me to be me was that I didn't feel strong enough to be me out there in the real world. I I felt all these expectations and I was sensitive to to the expectations. I, I was always very aware of what people wanted from me and what they needed to be happy. And I always tried to give them that. And, and this sensitivity made it quite hard to be out there in the real world because I was constantly looking at everybody else, figuring out what's going on, what's going on between those and within them. Because all our, our actions and reactions and interactions, that's one of the things that I've always been curious about. I've always been observing. I've always been very attentive to it. And I've always had this sensitivity to what's going on. And that just used up so much of my bandwidth, my, my mental and my emotional bandwidth that being out there in the real world, trying to fit in and trying to live up to all that was really hard. And so that was one side of my struggle. It, for me, the stress wasn't about time management or even work-life balance. 
it was it was this feeling that I didn't fit in on one hand. And then when people said, well, can't you just, you know, go to work and just keep your head down and just be yourself when you're off the clock. But that was, that was my spiritual rebel side poking its nose in again, because no, a part of me was too stubborn to compromise myself. I didn't want to give up who I was just in order to be normal or conform and get along I couldn't because that felt like giving up a part of me so when I realized a way to integrate and keep all my sides even the less pretty ones but knowing that I get to be all of me I get to take all of me and bring it to where I want to go that felt good that was a really big relief so realizing that my sensitivity that made it so hard for me to function out there in the world was actually also one of my strongest traits and, and qualities. It was one of the key things that made me me. It was totally essential to being me. So even when I felt the worst, if someone had come up to me and said, E, look, I got a green little pill. And if you eat that, your sensitivity will be gone forever. And you can go out there and get a real job. Wouldn't that be great? I would have declined on the spot because, well, I would probably have felt pressured to take it. But I, I would have declined because that would have meant giving up on who I am. And thank God that I was too stubborn. I'm so glad I was, even though it cost me all those years of getting dragged through life is how it felt like. And that's what coming to realize that is what helped me forgive the past. Because without that experience, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today without seeing how bad life can be when we are at our worst. I would never have come to search for the answers to how can we make life better? How can we use that and make life like this instead? So I would do it over 10 times if I had to, to get to where I am today. And that makes me more open to the present, which is my second point on this slide, that once we stop carrying a grudge about what happened in the past, once we sort of gently dare put down our wall and open up, we become curious, we become trusting, we get to actually see what life is showing us right now. Life is always, there's always options out there, but we have to be aware of them. And we can be when we've forgiven our past. We become open, not just to what's in the present, but we're starting to get a trust in the future as well. Because if we can look at every single bad thing in our past and realize the value of it, what could scare us about the future? right? If your worst experience ever gave you your biggest strength is part of your superpower, what would that mean if you ran into something horrible tomorrow? I totally believe that we can develop tools to meet those things. And yeah, it will suck in the moment. I'm not sort of running around singing all day, every day. But I am more often than not waking up with this feeling of, ooh, what is life got in store for me today? And when I have those other days, I might not know exactly what's going on, but because I have sort of this trust, I'm open and I can be curious and I can be like, all right, this sucks, but I'm sure it'll turn up something of value. And that means that there are still days that aren't super great, but they're so much better than 
what it used to be. And to me, that's, that's everything. Having found this way of being on life's good side, mainly and generally, that is just, that's just everything to me. And that's why I'm so passionate and excited about sharing it. So I'm really glad that you're here. And I hope you're getting a sense of it as well. Because just take another deep breath and imagine the freedom you would find if you no longer have to hold on to that resentment. If you can let go of the grudge and if you could let your guard down. Even just, even just in this moment right here, it's just you and I sitting at either end of our screens talking about the best parts of life. If you could hold on to that for 30 seconds, what would that give you? What feeling is that evoking in you? What thoughts become, what thoughts pop up and start to seem possible? And what would it be like to wake up like this in the morning? Not necessarily every single day, but more often than not. I hope that it's something that you will, I believe that even just having talked about it today, even just being open to it, will allow more of it in because now you're aware of it. Now you've sort of set your antenna to pick up next time you come across it as well. You will, you will pay attention, you'll notice and you'll be like, ooh, there's that good feeling again. So welcome and congratulations. You are now on life's good side, as you have always been. But I hope that getting this reminder of what it's like has sparked something in you. Because I truly believe that when we get to wake up with this trust in our life, with a familiarity with our superpower, if not fully, then at least starting to get a sense of it, starting to take it for a spin and see what we can do with it and, and what impact it can make for others. And then while doing that, you can let go of the old wounds and old resentment. I believe that this is truly the first step in falling in love with life and that is that is the best thing i have experienced that's this feeling of being in love with life of just looking around my world and just be like mm, yeah it's good to be here it's good to be me there's no place i'd rather be there's no one else i would rather be so that's why I have taken everything I know, everything I have learned, everything I have figured out, everything I have found the hard way, and I have put it into a 12-week program that I would love to tell you about. That is here. I just call it In Love With Life because that's what it's all about. Um, and... Even if you're not in the market for any more spiritual or personal development programs right now, I invite you to, to stick around and just listen. Because if you like the training, this is gonna this is gonna resonate with you as well. And even just being open to the idea of it, even just soaking up the vibration and the frequency of it will help you recognize it when you meet it out there in the world, in your life. Because again, these methods, I might have put them together and the processes and the exercises, that's all me, but the rest of it isn't. So whether you join the program or not, you still get to experience this. You still get to be in love with life you can do that in a million different ways or you can invent the million and one way to do it 
that's perfectly fine. This is just my my way of doing it. This is my offer to you if you would like a travel companion, someone who has taken this adventure, and if you would like to walk the next little bit of your journey together. So let me tell you a little bit about this program. It is, again, this, there's not going to be any pushy selling here. So if this is all about you feeling inward, looking inward, and checking if it resonates with you, and you will know right away if this is sort of a, mm, I don't know, then it's not for you. And that's perfectly fine because there's something else that's a much better match. But this is for you that if you probably resonated with the training already, if this is for you, and you still have this feeling of more, you always had this feeling that there had to be more to life, that you have more to give. And the good news is that life feels the same way. Life wants more with you and from you as well. Life wants to let you have more. Life wants nothing more than for you to let in and allow the good stuff. So if you want to give yourself this gift of falling in love with life, together you will be able to create magic and confidence and joy more than anything, because I believe that that's what we're here for, to just have a great time in this amazing universe on planet Earth that is crazy and beautiful and confusing and chaotic and everything at once. And to help you do that, I have created four modules because that's the four pillars that I needed in order to turn my life around from my deep dark hole of stress and depression to having this feeling of, ooh, today might not have turned out the way I expected it to, but I kind of like it anyway. And the first thing, as I have mentioned, and that I hope you've started to, to get an idea of, is discovering your genius, looking at your superpower, the thing that made you feel different. That is one area and one of the really fun ones. But there are at least five other areas that we'll be diving into and looking for, for these nuggets of your buried treasure, the parts of you that you were born with, but that you might have forgotten along the way, or someone convinced you that it wasn't good enough or that it wasn't the right fit. So we're gonna uncover all of them in the first module so you get to be fully you. And then in the second module, we will design your dream. So we will take all these nuggets, all the puzzle pieces and put them together so that you can create a 3D internal image of what you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have and how you want to live your life. Because when that sensation becomes visceral, that's when it starts taking, taking off, that gives it power. But I, you probably, you probably had big dreams before or daydreams or whatever. And you probably realized that that's not enough. No matter how much you journal, how much vision boards you do or, or dream about it or write affirmations. At least to me, that has never been enough in and of itself. The other thing the third module is, is really a key element because our beliefs and our patterns play such a big role in how we actually live our lives. So no matter how big, a bright, beautiful dream we have, if our beliefs are telling us that it's not possible, it's just going to be one big sort of struggle. So we need to get our beliefs adjusted to be supportive of us and be on our side and you might be familiar with mindset work and that's not my favorite term actually because that's typically something about you just have to focus you just have to decide on what you want to do and then you just sort of overrule anything else and just 
stick with it, self-discipline and go for it. To me, that's going about it the hard way. And I'm, I'm nothing if not always looking for the, for the most enjoyable way. And again, growth and change is part of nature. It's part of our lives. So we don't have to make it that hard. It gets to be enjoyable. And that's why I have created these gentle and still powerful and effective ways of healing our past and in the process adjusting our beliefs so they become supportive that way we get to live our purpose because the dream we have inside of us when that matches our beliefs it can unfold and become real and then we're gonna design a structure that lets you experience your dream you get to have your purpose you get to be your purpose you get to take steps and add to your purpose every day even on days where you're still just mowing the lawn and doing the laundry and making lunches for the kids or whatever there are ways to cram in enough of the good stuff for you to feel like every day matters like every day you get to be you and you get to be here to contribute your purpose so if you like the sound of that i will just briefly tell you how we're gonna do that because this program is it's both very immersive but at the same time it's flexible it is not a, a do it yourself it is a group program we are a handful of people because small groups are a safer space for most people and and it's still enough to have the group dynamic because that's one of the best parts it's not it's not going to be me just telling you and lecturing and it's going to be there's going to be so much because the groups are always put together perfectly when we come together we always meet people who got something for us so maybe their question is the perfect one that you didn't even think about asking or maybe they have an example that i couldn't give but that touches you or resonates with you so i love the group dynamic and every week there is a group call but first you get your weekly assignment that's something you can do on your own time it takes about 20 30 minutes if you just sit down and do it which you can absolutely do or you can sort of look it over and let it simmer and percolate a little bit and go back and forth but however much you want to put into it is completely up to you and even if you didn't look at it whatsoever during the week if you still show up for the group call you will still get, you might even get the assignment done during the call, or you can ask your questions. There's even a hot seat chance if, if anybody needs something figured out and want to do it with the group, we do hot seats whenever it fits. But if you prefer to, to keep that more private, if there's things that you feel are too vulnerable to share in the group, I have also added uh, individual sessions because some things you might not want to share and some things are just so specific to you that it doesn't really make sense to bring it up in the group. So that's why there's one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. And well, now I have sort of talked so much about why I'm excited about this program. I have brought some testimonials from some of my previous people and what they liked about working with me. So I'll just quickly read this to you and then we are almost done. There's Mariana from Sweden. She says, this content invites you to go beyond your desires and dares you to admit the existence of your big, bold dreams. Trine inspired me in a heartfelt way to allow myself the most beautiful journey towards embracing my personal dream life and realizing that all the tools I need are already available. No more excuses. And that's exactly, I love that she points that out because they are all the tools 
we're born with them. Life is showing them to us along the way. Life is gifting them to us. We have not just always noticed. I, I know there are a lot of things I weren't aware of and a lot of things I wouldn't have noticed if they hadn't been pointed out to me. So that's one of the things we're going to do together. We're going to figure out how you already have the answers, how you already have the tools. And I can't wait. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting excited. But then next up is Daniel from Germany. He says, Trine has an incredibly calm and relaxed nature and her harmonious energy is immediately transmitted. This makes it easy to feel connected and open up. She has the ability to make you ask yourself all the right questions. Trina has a unique view and can always give you another perspective. This helped me a lot when I felt stuck. And he just pointed out my favorite hobby, I think, because looking at things differently, turning things upside down, having a fresh perspective, that's one of the most fun things, reframing things. I really like doing that. And sometimes we come up with some really fun and surprising ideas. Some of them might not really work, but just it shakes things loose. And that's just the first step is to question the old ways of doing things. So I really like that part of the journey as well. And then there's Megan from South Africa who says that Trina has put together a very well thought out self-development journey. I loved her personal shares relating to her life. As a coach, I found the content easy to understand and I can definitely use the tools to take a deeper look. I had many light bulb moments and I, I like how she enjoyed the journey because that was one of the most important things to me when I put it together is that I, I, there are so many of the, oh, just do this and just do that sort of teachings out there. But I was like, how? And I don't want anybody to be left hanging. I'm not just going to be, oh, you just have to think positive thoughts. Because, I mean, if it was that easy, I would probably already have done it. So built in step-by-step -step processes to take you sort of in a logical progression and building a foundation and then the next layer and the next. So I really appreciate that it worked for her and I'm going to do my very best to make sure that the processes work for everybody because, of course, we have individual journeys, but some of the steps are more or less in the same order. So if you like that, I well, you might be ready to sign on already, and I'd love to, but I still have some bonuses for you that I think you're going to really like. And I call them good side bonuses because it's for everybody who's been on this training, either here or on the replay. Both is perfectly fine. And the bonuses are as follows. Number one, that is an extra individual session that you can book right away. As soon as you signed up, you can get started because the program itself, which I should probably have mentioned, starts uh, November 16th, 15th, 16th, in the middle of November. And and at that time, we will, of course, start out with the foundation. But if you have something that's that's itching right now, something that you really want to uncover, we can get a session started right now so you can hit the ground running and be completely set up to get the most out of the start of the program. And the second bonus Oh, that's probably my favorite because that is the seven bridges. That's what I call it because that's my personal framework. That is my foundation. I've shared a little bit about it. It's part of my sort of sense of the universe, but there are seven bridges that I have used to help me cross over confusion and insecurity and unhappiness and 
tricky relationships and I have put them together and you guys are the first ones I'm sharing it with and it is not available anywhere else. So that's for you if you want to be part of the program, the pilot program that starts mid-November. And the third bonus is a six month follow up because no matter how great a program is, no matter how amazing a book is once you've read it, no matter how fired up you feel after a session, there's always that sort of, it kind of fades after a little while. Real life takes over and, and it gets sort of dropped to the back of your mind. So for six months after the 12 week program, there will be full access to all the content, all the exercises, all the replays and the Facebook group that I don't think I mentioned in the group setting, but of course we will have a closed Facebook group where we, where there's always the opportunity to reach out. And in the follow-up, I will still be checking in daily to see how everybody's doing. We can do uh, live Q and A's when there are questions that can't be solved in, in the chat. And I hope you're going to pop in there and share all your wins because that's one of the best parts about a group experience that is celebrating together and being there, of course, on the dark days, but then celebrating when we turn those around as well. So now my you're in luck. <laughs> my voice is getting a little bit raw because I've been doing this training three times in two days now. So last part is, of course, the investment in this program. And it's not a small investment. It's actually threefold because you will be investing your precious time into the program. It will be a minimum an hour and a half doing the exercise and showing up for the call. But if you, the exercise will easily give you more to do during the week and showing up in the Facebook group, asking questions, interacting with the others, you can fill in as much time as you like, but at a minimum an hour and a half every week. Then there is the second kind of investment, which is your energy, because no matter how flexible it is time-wise, it will require some energy. And you probably, I don't have to say that, because we all know that what we put into things is what we get back. So how much energy you invest is up to you. It's not gonna, you know, leave you drained and oh, lying on the sofa all week because you have to do that exercise. They're not that hard. They are meant to be enjoyable, but it will poke stuff. It will bring things up. And, and that's part of the fun because it's all in there for a reason. So everything's welcome and we will deal with it along the way. And then there is the final investment, which is the financial one, the money that we got to get to. But as I said, this is a pilot program. It's the first time I've put it together in this 12 week package. And of course, that means that you get my full and undivided attention because this is brand new to me as well. So I'm going to be making sure that everything runs smoothly and tweaked and adjusted to match you guys perfectly. And at the same time, there's the other benefit of a, of a pilot program. And that is, of course, the price. Because instead of the $7,000 that this program is set at, on a full scale, you get it for half, which is $3,500. And that includes four installments. If you are not into that, but just want to get started and pay up front, there is an extra little premium. So it's just $3,000. And if you want this and really want it, but just can't find the money like that, we can always find uh, an individual payment plan. This is supposed to be available for everybody that feel 
feels called to it. It has to resonate. And if you're sitting there, if you're on the fence, don't worry about it. Just let it go. You will find your thing out there. I know you will. You're already on your way. And I hope today's training has added a little something, has given you maybe a fresh perspective, has given you a little fun and that you are going to give life another chance to show itself from its good side. So thank you so much for today. Thank you for being here with me or watching the replay. That's perfectly fine. And I hope to talk soon. I have included um, a couple of links. The first one is to the sign up page. The next one is my email address, because if you have any questions, you just reach out and ask me. You can have a calendar link as well if you need a, a chemistry check. I call them my, my 30 minute calls where you can see if this is actually for you, if there's any doubts left. And then finally, I couldn't resist a little shameless self promotion of my book. It is brand new and it's on Amazon. And it is, it's the same essence as what I've been talking about here today. It's the same essence that will be in the program. But of course, the book, it, it, it's been a while since I developed the book. So there's added more every day. I'm more and more in love with life every day. But it's a good place if you want to enjoy the heck at life. I hope you feel like checking it out or reaching out. So thank you for now. I hope you have a really lovely day and that you wake up feeling good about life tomorrow and every day after that. So bye. <laughs>